this is William Jung of Rostell and Jung. We're printmakers, artists, and recently the manufacturers of the Cool Color water based inks. And there's no other ink around like it. When, when William and I were first married, we had concerns about having our live in space next to our studio space. And being printmakers and teachers, we were constantly around solvents. So we had great fears, not only about being pregnant and the damage that the solvents could do to the fetus, but also once the child was born, how we would live next to a studio um, and have a child play near us. So that's why we developed the Kua Color, because we wanted a totally safe ink to work with. We found that when we switched from oil-based ink to watercolor or to any other water monotype colors, they dried too quickly and we could not do any registration plates or roll-ups or we just had to change our whole manner of working and we weren't satisfied with making changes. We wanted to work in the same exact manner as we were working when we did have oil-based ink. What we discovered was that there was no professional grade water-based inks around. Uh, any of the inks that were around were primarily geared for children, so it didn't have the intensity or the purity of the colors that we as artists wanted. And since coming up with this product, we've gotten rave reviews from all artists, artists from all over, uh, raving about like this is the first water-based ink that they've used that has full range and intense colors that they're used to. All had very good reputations for being light fast and also we selected colors that their pigments weren't as toxic as some of the other colors may have been. So one of the added benefits of course is the ease in which it is to clean this up. No solvents, uh, some rags, paper towels, and water. That's all you need and without it, I mean without the solvents, it's just tremendously easy to clean up and you don't have to deal with the noxious fumes that you usually associate with printmaking. Or expensive ventilation systems. Frequently we just work on our dining room table and lay out a sheet of um, plexiglass. All right, the Kua Color contains no fillers or polymers or additives that thicken it. So it's very unique in the fact that it's in a liquid formula. The one important factor before you're using it is to remember to shake it. Since there's no fillers in there, the pigments will settle, so you need to give a little shake before you begin. And you can hear a stainless steel ball sort of dispersing the pigment within the binder. And that helps distribute the pigment into the entire bottle. One of the unique qualities about this is that it's very slow drying and originally designed for monoprinting and monotypes However, we do have additives that you can add to it that you can do wood blocks, linoleums, and dry points. You can roll it up, okay, unlike some of the other inks. Uh, it's the only water-based ink that really stays moist for long periods of time, giving you time to work on your image. Okay, the colors are very rich and intense, and it can be rolled up. And also, it's the only one around that you can print on dry paper, or dampen paper. Okay, by eliminating having to soak your paper before you print, it makes it much neater and makes registration of multiple prints, multiple passes on the press, much easier and neater. And less messy, which is what we like. Uh, often, you can pull a ghost, okay, which is a second print from the same plate. Okay, by using damp paper, you can remove more of the ink off the it can get to a point where after a few passes you can remove almost all the ink off the uh, printing plate. Sometimes it may be necessary to dampen the paper if you would like to do an embossing from a collagraph plate, or sometimes you may want to dampen the paper because you don't have enough time um, to print it immediately. You could let the plate dry and then two or three days later find a printing press and then go and print on dampened paper with dry ink. It depends on the humidity conditions. In a very humid climate, you can go for weeks and the ink will not dry on the plate. If you're working in air-conditioned or a studio that is heated, then you may just add a little retarder and it'll delay the drying time. Um, 
there are people who like to do outdoor printing and they go outside and work and work from life or from nature and return to the studio several days later and in that case they allow the plate to dry and work on damp paper. All these rollers can be found in local hardware stores. As you can see, there are a variety of different types of rollers. This is not just the only roller for printmaking, although it is a good roller and it has its benefits. Uh, we're going to show you a very fine foam, and it has a rounded edge on both sides, which prevents lap marks. Lap marks are the lines that we get from the edge of a roller. Uh, this is a little denser of a foam, which will give you a little more of a texture. And there's a softer, this roller is coated, so it doesn't absorb as much, but it is much softer than the standard printmaking rubber roller. The amount of ink that will sit on the plate will vary depending upon the type of material you use for your roller. If you're going to use a rubber roller, you'll have a lighter plate tone, or you'll have less ink on the plate than if you used a foam roller. So if you want darker colors, use the foam roller. Always remember to shake your Akua color so that the pigment will disperse. First place, a few drops of color on the plate, and I'm adding a drop or so of retarder. It's best to add a little bit of ink to the plate and roll it in layers, opposed to adding a lot of ink all at one time. Now, if I want to build up the color darker than this, what I would do is just add a little more, and this time I won't add the retarder. It's almost like painting a wall. You're going to prime the wall first with a primer, and then you layer it with additional roll-ups. With this roller, you can only get to a certain point where the ink may reach its maximum of what can stay on the plate. After a while, it will actually remove itself and go back onto the roller. This is the foam roller. I'm also going to add a drop of the turner. And I'm also going to layer it with several thin layers opposed to one heavy application. See, with this roller, I can actually add more ink. For this one, after a while, the roller will not roll it anymore. What will happen is you'll sort of just keep spinning around. With the foam roller, you're able to add more ink to the plate so you can get intense color. Because you're able to apply more to the plate, it will not pick up the color where with the rubber roller, you get very fine, thin layers of ink. Now, sometimes you may prefer that very fine ink, and that's fine for doing multiple register plates where you would like for the color to be thin so you can print another color on top of it. What I usually do is just store the roller in a plastic bag. The cool color will not dry, and this way you're ready to roll and you're not wasting any ink or any time cleaning up the roller. Um, you can also buy replacements and then just change the roller head and have a different roller head for every color that you have. Drawing into the plate with a Q-tip. This is a cosmetic sponge used for eyes. For Q-tips, you can throw away. This you can wash and reuse. They also have two different types of sponges, one with a point and one with a rounded edge. 
This is a dental tool with a rubber tip. Great for very tiny areas. And this is a color shaper. The stiff color shaper will lift more, where the other softer color shaper sort of blends it in. Uh, this is a blending tool. can also be reused. This is a sponge on a wooden dowel. Gives you nice, really clean pickup. Mm -hmm. Different than using a rubber um, color shaper, where the rubber from the color shaper moves the ink and creates a little pocket that will show you darker areas of color. Whereas when you're using sponge, it absorbs the color and gives you a cleaner line. Uh, there are all kinds of different qualities in foam. This is cosmetic foam and it's very soft and dense and absorbent, where this type of foam is not quite as absorbent, so you can get streaks or tone where cosmetic foam cleans it a little better. stiffen to the same consistency as watercolor from a tube. If you let it stand out in a tray and let it dry naturally, eventually it will look like this and then you can paint directly on your plate. This method may be perfect for the outdoor landscape painter who would like to take a palette out with them, do a painting on a plate, and then bring it indoors and print it on the press at a later time. It may be helpful to coat the plate with a little bit of a liquid dish detergent and then let that plate dry and then do your painting. Allow that to dry. After you create your painting, let your painting dry in the sun or with a hair dryer. Return to the studio and dampen the paper and print with damp paper with an etching press or by hand. The liquid dish detergent will act as a release agent and all the color, even though it's dry, will release onto the plate. This is the tack thickener. It's a modifier that will add tack and thicken the Kuda color instantly. On a separate ink slab, add a little bit of color and add a little tag thickener. And mix it in. So you're sort of folding it in. And it'll gradually stiffen. There's another uh, way that you could stiffen a cool color naturally um, is pour some in a jar and let it sit for a while and then at this point you could use it rolling up a cool color when it has been thickened by air drying would be similar to rolling up some of the other inks that you have seen for wood block or linoleum cut this makes it possible to use a cool color for wood box and linoleum plates. Wanted to build it up. The other thing, notice that I am not putting the ink down on a separate ink slab, but I'm putting it directly on the plate and spreading it out. The extender gives back the same consistency as it was when you originally took it from the bottle. This is the Yakua Color Needle Applicator. It comes with a bellows bottle, so you can hold it very easily. And as you need more color, you just press slightly with the palm of your hand. The needles come separately. 
and it comes with a stem which is easily removed for filling again and the needle comes off easily for changing different sizes. It also comes with a replacement cap if you want to just close and store it. This is a very fine line and this is a very wide line. Since Akua Color contains no dryers, it will not clog the needle. If you'd like to clean the needle because you would like to change colors, the easy way to do it is you take a bottle and fill it with water and you put the uh, nib that you'd like to clean and you just squirt the water through. This is our newest Akua Color Monotype pen. And what this does is it allows you to make larger, more varied types of lines on your monotype plate. And it has a valve action, so in order to get the ink down into the nib, you press slightly on the nib and the ink will flow. And once the ink is flowing, you can draw your line. This particular nib has a 70 degree angle. So you can draw a wide angle, or a wide, you can draw a wide line, depending on the way you hold it, or you can turn it to another angle and draw a thin line. There are five different nibs that you can get with it that you can very easily change. There are brush nibs, bullet nibs, pencil lines, and chisels. A variety of different types of thicknesses for your lines. The advantage to using this is they're very um, easy to travel with. They don't leak. Even if you were to take out one of the nibs, because of the valve action, it will not spill out. Akua color can be added to your plate in a traditional painting manner using brushes. Dip pens. These are the calligraphy dip pens. They're very nice. Phone brushes. You can get this in a stationery store. It's a foam moistener for stamps. And this keeps the ink inside a tube. You could use it um, directly on the plate. Or our favorites would be the cool color needle applicators and monotype pens. When using this applicator, it may sometimes be best to keep an extra piece of paper by your side because the very first little squeeze forms a little dot. So if you start on the paper and then pull it off, you'll get a continuous thin line. When using the monotype pens, on a separate ink slab, activate the point by pressing and getting your ink flowing before you approach your plate, and then just pull. I'm using a different side of the point to get a thin line, and the wide side of the point to get a wide line. Placed on top of 
the plate and I'm using a pin press to roll the plate for pressure to release the ink. To create wash effects, instead of using water, we use blending medium we originally called thinner. And it is used for creating wash effects. To use it, you just place a little bit on a separate ink slab or palette and use your brush, lift some up, and blend it into the color that you would like to thin and make more like a watercolor wash effect. This works better than using water. It doesn't dry the ink. Whereas water would dry the ink, even though it may look beautiful on the plate, when you would get to um, print it, it would not release off of the plate. Where the blending medium is a very greasy water substitute, and it will delay the acrylic color from drying and create beautiful wash effects. It'll also help if you'd like to blend one color into another color. using a dry paper towel and cleaning up my ink slab. 